Lord, we thank you that you are the God of the impossible. You can do anything. We want to trust in your ability and not our own. Teach us to see difficulties in our life from your perspective. Help us to focus on your love and your power. We want to be like Joshua and Caleb, who believed in the good report and focused on you, even in hard circumstances. Our responsibility is to be carefully to trust and obey your word. Today, we bring before you these difficulties in our lives. We particularly, O oh Lord, want to think of those who are autistic. And we pray for the autistic community. Thank you that you give us your son to teach us and to forgive us that we can know that Jesus suffered and died for us. And while he was on the earth, he healed the sick and touched the lives of everyone. We now commit the lives of all autistic people in our nation into your loving care. We ask you to lay your hands on them and give them your peace. Give them the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray together, I declare my faith in your ability to fulfill your promises to me. Your will will find you for me and for the battles in my life. You will never leave or forsake me. I do not need to figure out everything. You already know the best plan for my life. I will not try and manage man -made method to do what only you can do. Show us your supernatural power. Teach us how to walk by faith and pray breakthrough prayers. We choose to have faith in your ability to break through every obstacle in our lives. Just like Joshua, will you give me the land and every place where my feet stay? Through you, we push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God, we make our boast all day. And we will praise your name forever. We say, sing the Our Father together. So let's worship him as we sing together. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Mm -hmm. 
This week, we just want to take this opportunity to wish Sipor a happy birthday, but also Mark, who's here with us, and um, Charles Marriott. Um, that's Sipor for his birthday. And then later on in the week, Emma Toms has a birthday, and Noluta Lokaba. Um, anniversaries for this week, the gift of love, and marriage is for Gavin and Lucy Burke. Um, and so we convey our salutations to them in celebrating love. Could we sing happy birthday for those that aren't here today? So every 
everyone I'm sure knows Mark. Um, Mark is here today. Mark. And Mark is, um, according to our annual society meeting, is one of our new stewards. And so our prayers are with you as you offer to serve God um, in that realm of ministry. Yeah. Um, then every Wednesday in church, we have changed from Bible study. Um, we are in a space where we're just praying for our church and just engaging in a time of reflective um, space. We play a bit of music, uh, we read a portion of music maybe, and we just think about it. And then we pray together. And we do that for a half an hour from half past six up until um, seven o'clock. So please feel free to join us for that half an hour of prayer. Um, we also want to take cognizance of the other stewards um, that we have um, elected into office. It's Moses Machojo. And then our youngest steward is Avela Swane, who's just matriculated that last year. So our salutations to her and the others. We um, take up your offering and we trust that we will be generously towards the work of God. thank you for the gift of money. We thank you, O oh God, that we can bring these gifts for the furtherance of your kingdom. We are aware, O oh God, that there are those that do not have. And so we pray for them today, that you would give them sustenance, that you would give them the necessary stuff to sustain their bodies. We pray this morning, O oh God, that you would receive our talents that we bring to you. Talents of service, as we see our Manyano ladies cooking to them. Talents of music, Jonathan and Vivian. And we just ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless them and pour out your countenance upon them. Talents, O oh God, of skill. And so we bring Wayne and we bring all those who are in our techno department before you. We just ask that you bless them and allow them the fullness of the grace that you bestow upon us. We pray, O oh God, for this week, having celebrated a week of Valentine. So, O oh God, one day before that, we pray, O oh God, for the gift of love, so that we may have love as you love us. And as we express this love, O oh God, that we would be mindful this day, that you invite us to share love, even with those whom it is difficult to share. It with. So walk with us this week and embrace us and encourage us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, um, we continue to worship God, and as we do, we sing together as a dear. Thanks for water, so my soul hands off to you.
may be seated. Thank you for those who were able to find it on your phones. And we had a slight glitch logically at the back. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Luke, Luke's Gospel, chapter 6. And this morning we read to you from verse 20 up until verse 26. Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 6, commencing to read from verse 20 up until verse 26. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I can remember John and forget the back. <laughs> um, it's been a while, but we're going to try our best. Um, Jesus looked at his disciples and said, Happy are the poor, the kingdom of God is yours. Happy are you who are hungry now, you will be filled. Happy are you who weep now, you will be loved. Happy are you when the people hate you, reject you, insult you and say that you are evil because all men of son of because all of the son of man be glad when that happens and dance for joy because the great reward is kept from you in heaven for that for their ancestors did the very same things to the prophets but how terrible for you who are rich now you have had an easy life it's good to God Come, let us pray. May the words of my mouth, O oh God, and the meditations of our hearts, may they be pleasing in your sight. You, O oh God, who has always been our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Friends, I had entitled my sermon, Greater Things Are Yet to Come. And I think when we listen to that theme and we try and discover what that means, we know that it's an invitation to hope. We know that it is a hope in Christ Jesus that invites us into a mindset that God can do new things and that God can turn whatever is bad in one season and bring a new season into place where things can be good. And so this morning, I have looked at this passage of scripture, and when I looked at the synoptic of the passage of scripture, you will find that in the synoptic, the synoptic in Matthew 5 verse 1 says that Jesus went up the mountain. And in Luke, it says he descended to a level playing field. So, so, so there could be a disparity in terms of where this is taking place. But what I know about any mountains, because I used to climb mountains as a young man, and I know that even when you reach the middle of it, you can still find a, a level plateau. For those who have climbed Table Mountain, I've never, um, you will know that there are spaces that it is level. And even if you're midway, you're still on top. Isn't that so? And so it doesn't matter where you are. And I think just with that, the writer wants to invite us into a space where we begin to see that the spaces of our lives are quite different, but the experiences is still expressed in some way or another. And, and, and more than that, Luke says that they left. So, so, so it's a space where we need to begin to understand that it's blessed are the poor. Do you remember that in the reading? But you cannot understand blessed are the poor if you forget what we read last week. Now, last week, we just read that they left everything. Do you remember chapter 5, verse 11, and then verse 28? They left everything and followed God. That's where we ended our sermon last week. And so we come into a new sermon this week, and we're following it chronologically, and we say, Blessed are the poor. And so it's a word of encouragement. It's a word of encouragement to the disciples because that's the audience. Yes, there are others, but it's primar primarily a conversation between Jesus and those who are now following him. And Jesus says, you've left all this stuff. You've come into a place where you don't have things as easy as what you have, would have had them before. There are moments in our lives when we go through seasons of sufficient, 
and insufficient. Let me remind you of that insufficient moment. The insufficient moment is when you punch in your pin, you remember that very clearly, you're at the right bank and it says you have insufficient funds. I think it's these moments. It's these moments that Jesus invites us into. And when Jesus invites us into that, he invites us into moments that says, these are illustrations, but illustrations of comparison. And in the illustrations of comparison, I want you to decide for yourself the kind of lifestyle you want to live. And I think all of us can be in spaces where we want to live lifestyles that are grand. All of us would want to be in lifestyles where we don't need to think where tomorrow's meal will come from. All of us want to be in lifestyles where we can say, ah, my debit order goes off and I don't have to worry. But I think there are some of us, there are some of us that are in spaces where it simply says, we worry. And we're not always sure how we will make it to the end of the map or the next end of the map. And we're not always sure how we get through the spaces of our emotions in this season. But what that says is that even in the spaces of trial and difficulty, so if we could put blessed are the poor, that portion up that you didn't read, that we can get into spaces in our lives where, where we can have conversation of how terrible for you who are full now, you will go hungry. That it begins to say that in life, there's a circle. And whilst you could be up there, you can drop tomorrow. Whilst you can have, there can come a moment where you don't have. Times have changed for us as, as Pop Town North Methodist Church, we might have had fat bank accounts. But we're in a space today where we begin to pray cognitively and we, and we say to God, God, we don't know how we get through this month. We don't know whether we are able to meet our budget, but we live by faith. And, and, and that's the beautiful thing when you no longer trust in, in a space of a church, when you don't trust on a fat bank account, but you trust on the provision of God. That you trust that this God whom we serve and whom we worship is still the same God that can touch the hearts of people. And that people know the mission imperatives of our society, of our society, that it's not only about inward lookingness, but it's about an outward engagement. It's think locally, but express globally. And, and that's a beautiful moment where we can say to God, you know what, God, we're suddenly in a space where we need to depend. And I think that's what makes that be attitude, because it's the same as Matthew chapter five. It's the Beatitudes. It's that which makes that beautiful. And, and it's just an invitation. An invitation to say, can you trust God? As I was thinking the other day, Vivian, and, 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 I, and, I, and I kind of kept this clip and I thought it would be appropriate to read it again this morning because it was a prayer that I engaged not so long ago. And the prayer went, I asked for strength. And God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I think that puts exactly that into perspective. So when I'm asking for strength, who gets strength to run a, a hundred meters, because it's athletic time now, when you don't do the exercise? You've got to do your stretches, you've got to do your sprints. And so I think when God is, is, is creating us into a space, he's got to give us all these difficulties. I once had a conversation with a previous congregation and we spoke of obstacles created and obstacles, even if it's daggers that they place in you, these are daggers that allow stepping stones for you to climb over the tree of, of, of whatever life is bringing to you. Yeah, how this prayer continues. It says, I asked for wisdom and God gave me problems to solve. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? 
How terrible for you who laugh now. You will mourn and weep. And I don't think that God at any point is wanting to say, if things are going good with you, you will have trouble tomorrow. I don't think that's what God, that's what Jesus says. I think it's about seeking help from God because we, we, we own our helplessness. I think we go through moments in our time, and, and I find this among many congregations, where they go through an operation, they go through some difficulty in their life, and, and I say, do you want us to pray for you? And they say, no, it's not necessary, I'm really okay. And I think those are the moments when we don't discover our, our helplessness. We don't discover what God is wanting to do in our lives because we can have the right medical aid. The full benefit is covered. We can have the best doctor. But when you're on that operation table, something can go terribly wrong. Even if it's local anesthetic. Because you could react to it. And it's those moments, those moments that invite us into a new thing cap to say, you know what? For everything that I experience in life, I need to be thankful. For everything that I go through in life, I need to bring that before God. And that I need to depend and be dependent on the intercessory prayers that others make on my behalf. Yeah, there's those who laugh are like the rich man. Do you remember the story of the rich man in Luke 12, verse 19? The rich man says, oh, my soul, I have plenty. And then God answers and he says, tell your soul what you have today. I will rip away from you tomorrow. I think these are beautiful moments that this story speaks about us. It's, it's a story that, 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 that speaks into defamation and commendation. People might praise you today, but people might also say something bad about you tomorrow. And so must speak about seasons. And I think if we, if we go through four seasons of life, we know it's winter, autumn, summer, spring. And I think for each one of us, we have those moments in our lives. We have great moments. We have sad moments. What's the artist? She sings, the God in the valley is still the same God on the mountain. I've just forgotten the artist. But I think this is the story. It's a story that says, at every place in our lives, God wants to meet us. It's a story that says, Christian living is not an armchair occupation. Christian living is not a spectator sport. Have you ever been to a spectator sport? What happens at a spectator sport, Wayne? Well, you sit and you watch. You sing and you watch. You sit and you watch. And you blow your vuvuzela, of course. right? And you make noise. But Christian, Christian living doesn't invite us on the, on, on the pavilion. Christian living says there's a problem down there. And I get into it. If the defense line became weak, I become the defense. That's that story. That's that story. Christian living is the moment in our lives where we can only take into eternity the things we have given away. For instance, even if it's only a cup of water, according to Matthew 10, verse 42. So I'm asking the question this morning. 
How are we giving away? I, I hold marriage counseling with people and I say marriage is, marriage is not the moment when you marry because you want to be loved. Marriage is the moment when you discover how much love you have and you choose someone to give it to. That's marriage. That's relationship. Is when you look at your own capacity and you begin to say, God, what do I do with this richness? And can I take this richness and keep it for myself? Because that's the warning that Jesus gives. He says, what you hoard in this life, you cannot take with you. So maybe the question, where is this warning in the story of the Beatitudes? What do you have to give? And I think the things that we have to give is not often just money. The things that we have that we can give is the gift of laughter. The gift of joy. I think if I have to give a moment this morning and say, what can you give? And give you a second to, to echo one word in terms of what you know you have. It would be an awesome moment. It would be an awesome moment to discover how rich we are. It would be an awesome moment to know that we can come into spaces where we can look at what is what, what are we truly impoverished about? Are we simply surviving? Or do we understand that our poverty can be our spiritual poverty? Because there could be moments in our time of life where we think we know it all. There could be moments in our lives where we think we've got the answers. I want to tell you, just when I think I've got the answers in the scripture, I find a new challenge. Just when I think I understand it, there's something deeper and something far more profound. And so it speaks of our need, of our need to want to learn more. So hear this again. Blessed are the rich for they shall become poor. But it's really a state of mind when you think you have so much that you don't need any more. Have you ever been in that space where you are overconfident? Let me give you a moment of overconfidence. You prepare for a job interview and you are entirely overconfident. And you get there, and your overconfidence has not helped because you didn't do the research for the job. It's those moments. They sound different there. If we know Jesus, then Jesus would not say to us, How terrible when all people speak well of you. Their ancestors said the same thing about you. So, what, what does that mean? Flattery. So for me as a minister, there are deep moments in my life that I cannot just speak the things that you will like. Because that creates flattery. I then say to you, for as long as I make you feel good, come with me. What happens the day when I don't make you feel good anymore? Then you are attacked by such disaster of disappointment. And all of this all of this in the scope of what Jesus says and does for us are moments that says, who will you trust man? Or will you trust God? And maybe it invites us even into a deeper space so that, so that we hear the next thing. I asked for courage and God gave me danger to overcome. How can you have courage when you are not trained in danger? So what does courage become when you've not experienced life? Just wanting you to think about that. Or 
I asked for love. And God gave me troubled people to help. I think that's what we need to battle with. That's what we need to grapple with. That, that, that when we are in a space where we say, I don't have love. And we ask for it, then surely God's going to send us something that will knock our cotton socks off us and we would not know what to do, do with it. To remember the words of the, of the chorus writer, more love, more power, more of you in my life, in the space of this love week. And if God brings us that love that he has, could it not be love for the marginalized? Could it not be love for the outcast? Could it not be love for the downtrodden? Could it not be the moment in our lives where we need to be extending love to those who it is difficult to love? I think those are the moments that this reality of just go one slide back that this, the attitude brings to us. Maybe this morning, it's a moment where we need to acknowledge our spiritual starvation. I think what COVID has done for us is that it has starved us. And you know what happens when you starve? I want you to think of the physicality of it. Of, of, of what it does when you eat less. When you eat less, your tummy shrinks. You get used to go without. I yesterday engaged four people that I'm doing life coaching with, and, and I'm noticing how they eat. Every Saturday when I spend time with them, they don't eat big meals because they, they, they live on the street. They used to just a little. And they eat slower than we do. I didn't realize that. I thought when you live on the street, you eat faster because that's what we do when we're in boarding school. Right? They eat slow because they know the process. And they know when they eat slower, they'll fill themselves far easier. So we too, we go through moments in our lives where we say, ah, I can go without the community of faith. I can go without Bible studies. I can go without my accountability group. And we become spiritually poor. We've created a new diet. So see the new diet out there. This is the diet that COVID created. The diet that COVID created is not go to church on Sunday, but start jogging. And then when you jog, you stop at the coffee shop. And then you have a cuppa together. So the fellowship is still there. The community is still there. But is it this stuff? Is it this stuff that will make us uncomfortable? They also have uncomfortable spaces. There are moments that they have a hamstring that pulls. And maybe they have beautiful, quiet moment conversations with God. But is our call to be one and undivided, not among people? And so while it is wonderful to have hybrid spaces, hybrid spaces take us away from this. And we become hungry. We become so fed up that we don't need people anymore. And we do need people more. I think these moments are moments, you know, you know when it says, be glad when that happens and dance for joy because a great reward is kept for you. That moment when people bring you down, when people bring you down and the word of God says, be glad. Not only be glad, dance. 
Have you, know, have you seen on a Friday what people send out on a Friday? Once it's Friday morning, what do young people send out? There's something that young people send out on their WhatsApp statuses. They send out, it's Friday, and it comes with a dancing thing. Isn't it? Have you seen that? It started with Nalele Walk. Do you remember this? Hey? Oh, this is wonderful that I've experienced that across age. But it's this moment of saying, I've gone through, do you see the season? Gone through a tough week. Something great is coming. I think that's the invitation. That's the invitation to live in hope. Papa North went through a hard time, hit with hard times. And God says, come dance. Find your happy moment again. Find your mojo. And when we find our mojo, it invites us to be in a place where we can be godly people who who receive opportunities. Blessed are the poor for they shall be. In, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the weak for they shall be. Strong. So when people are hungry in our feeding program, aren't they strong when they leave us on a Sunday morning and a Monday morning and a Friday morning? And therefore we respond socially because that's our social holiness moment. Those are the moment of social justices where we say we have plentiful and we narrow the gap between rich and poor. We've just had the conversation that the president brought to us. And I don't know how we as a faith community have interpreted that conversation. We won't go there. And I wonder, I wonder how that 350 conversation sits in our psyche. And when that 350 conversation sits in our psyche, what do we do with that? What do we do with the knowledge that there are people that only have 350 rand? to survive for a month, and we know it's impossible to survive. Isn't that it? And we have, and God invites us to share. Friends, I pray that we may come into a space that we can be channels of peace and not instruments of war where things break down, that we will build them up. Christianity is not a lazy boy chair experience. You know I mean? Christianity is an experience where you get into the mud and you get dirty. Anyone here that knows rugby? Yeah. Rugby. You cannot say you're a front row player if you don't want to get into the scrum. And you know what's the problem with a scrum? You get hurt there. They can just drag you down with one pull. And that's Christian living. Get in the scrum and play the game. And sometimes all it takes to get the ball on the other side of the line is the weight off. The weight off. The pack. The weight of the scrum. So maybe I'm asking you to find the weight of the scrap. We're on the line. We're on the line. The ball needs to go down. We are greater together than what we are. Taught. May you find that challenge profound this morning as you discover that greater things are good to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Our response scene is, make me 
a channel of your peace. to hear you say, I am your hope over all the other voices, Lord. Your word says you are the hope for the hopeless. So I'm running to you with both hands stretched out and grabbing on to you. Fill us up with hope and give us a tangible reminder today that hope is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. God, you know those things in our hearts that we barely dare to hope for. Today, we give them to you. We trust the, and trust them to you and ask that you, because we know that you can do more than we could ever guess or humanly imagine, or that our wildest dreams could ever conjure. So we ask God that you be our hope and our trust. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We share in the grace. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. We sing the folks to do together. Now with me. Mm -hmm. 